Have you ever wondered if it's possible to live in sync with your cycle? Do you struggle with a negative mindset around your period? Are you wondering if it's possible to be feminist and anti-birth control? We're going to explore these questions and so much more in the Managing Your Fertility podcast, because this is about helping you live a whole and full life. I'm your host and guide, Bridget Busacker, joining you in this journey of exploration related to women's health care, feminism, and fertility awareness. Are you ready? Let's get started. Mariana, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you on today. Oh, hi, Bridget. Thank you for having me. So before we jump into this episode regarding the Couple to Couple League, I want to introduce our guest here with us. Mariana Lopez and her husband are a certified natural family teaching couple with the Couple to Couple League. They live in the Bay Area in California with their four young children and love to share how NFP, though not without its challenges, has touched their marriage and brought them closer to God. Mariana, I'm thrilled to have you on, excited to have you share more about your own story and more about Couple to Couple League for our listeners. So can you uh, jump in, tell us a little bit more about your story using NFP and why you became an instructor for Couple to Couple League? Uh, sure. Um, so I'm, I'm a cradle Catholic, and I think through Catholic school, I always knew or I, I was taught that um, the Catholic Church was um, against the birth control. And the method that should be used by couples was the natural methods. Um, so when I when I got engaged, uh, my husband is not from a Catholic background. He's uh, he was raised Protestant, uh, and I told him I wanted to use that method, but he was pretty much against it. Uh, we almost um, canceled the wedding because of this. This was something very serious for him, and it didn't make sense. Um, I think at that time, I didn't understand why was this teaching um, still valid. I thought it was probably, I don't know, it was not in effect today, you know. Um, But my husband decided, okay, let's get married. We started using it. And I don't know, just through using it, uh, we started discovering the beauty behind this teaching and just you know, to get in tune with your body and doing it the natural way was just something that we wanted to share with other couples. And that's why we decided to, um, to become teachers. Wow. That's beautiful. And that's a huge, I mean, just your story and hearing that that's huge that you almost, you know, canceled your wedding, your engagement, just based on your decision around NFP. And it's beautiful to see how it's impacted you so positively. Um, and I mean, I know you said too, it doesn't have, um, it's not uh, without challenges, but it's something that has really brought you together in that, which is beautiful. So how did you guys start, um, the process for becoming instructors together in a teaching couple? Was that something that seemed pretty natural after you used, were using the method yourselves? Or was that, that was that another point of like, okay, this is the next step because I, to go from anti NFP to teaching it, that's huge for your husband. (laughs) Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. He was pretty much anti it. And we never really talked about it once we got married. And this was something that I think with, in general, with uh, birth control methods, it's something that it's a burden that it's put on the woman's shoulder. And the husband sometimes is like, okay, this is something you have to deal with, right? So it's, it's almost like the attitude that my husband took uh, with the method. It was like, okay, I don't agree with it, but you are in charge. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think, and we, it's, it's just funny, but we didn't talk about it for like the first five years of our marriage. And I thought at some point he was going to say, you know what, this is not working. I, I was never on board with it, but the truth is that he, he started noticing some changes in the way he saw me and many other like benefits of, uh, just because of using NFP, that he started sharing it with his friends um, without me knowing. Uh, he was like, oh, this is awesome. And I think at some point he um, he shared with me how he felt about it. And I was thrilled. And I don't know, it was probably the Holy Spirit because around that time, um, someone from the diocese reached out looking for couples that used the method that wanted to to, te- to, to become a teaching couple. So we signed up and we 
I think we took a training uh, a weekend in San Francisco with, a, I don't know, like 10, 12 other couples, uh, plus a training that took about six months. Um, it, it's self-based. So it was a training that both my husband and I did uh, online, and we had to, uh, you know, complete some tests. Um, and yeah, so we've been teaching for, oh, what's that, 2016, I think that's when we started teaching. And we've been teaching since then. That's so awesome. I, I just love this story of starting out so anti-NFP to coming to the point of teaching it and, and really seeing the benefits to it um, for your health, for your marriage, for you know even your spiritual growth too, which is just really beautiful to hear about this. So tell us more, what is Couple to Couple League? So Couple to Couple League is an international Catholic organization. I think it came about from the... In Humana Vitae, the encyclical by Pope Paul VI, uh, there was this call to uh, for couples teaching other couples about the natural family planning methods. And that's where the couple to couple name came about from this call uh, in this encyclical. Um, I think it was founded in the 1970s and it teaches the, so the, the the mission of the Couple to Couple League is to train couples to teach other couples um, natural family method. And the method we use is the symptothermal. Um, and I think the call from the encyclical by Pope, Pope Paul VI to include the husband, I think that's, I think that's a game changer because it's the family planning is not something that should only be dealt by the woman. You know, it's something that the couple, both husband and wife should be involved in. Uh, so I think this is something that makes a uh, couple to couple league very different, probably to other organizations or other methods that are taught uh, because it tries to include both husband and wife. Yeah, that's really beautiful. And I think that really speaks to, um, you know, what you said that family planning shouldn't rely solely on the woman and that, that stress and that pressure of this relies completely on you. You know, it's in the same vein, I think with birth control of shutting down and shutting off your body, um, in the same way, if you're, if you're not intentionally using NFP together as a couple, that same pressure can fall on a woman, although she's not using artificial hormones to suppress her reproductive system and turn it off. Essentially, right. it's, it's still a, a uh, mindset of this is your thing. This is your body. This is the burden that you've created in our marriage, which is, which is not true. Um, and that exactly. requires a lot of, um, conversation mindset work and really working with your spouse and an instructor to figure out, okay, how do we do this together? That this is something that we share in together, um, because that pressure can be enormous otherwise. So you had mentioned the, the symptothermal method, um, can you explain a little more how that works? What, is, what does it look like to track those symptoms and the process of charting? Sure. Uh, so the symptothermal method uses three signs. Uh, it's the temperature, the basal body temperature, the um, cervix, and uh, mucus, mucus observations. Um, so what a woman would do is it would, she would just need to be um, diligent about recording those uh, signs uh, in a chart, or she could use a paper chart, or we also have an app. Uh, it's called Cycle Pro Go. And um, so she would just need to take her temperature every day around the same time. Um, and then also record her mucus observations uh, throughout the day, you know, as she goes about her regular activities. Um, and then the third, the third sign is the cervix, but that's, um, optional as some women are not comfortable, um, measuring that sign. Um, so that's an additional information that can help, but it's not necessary. It's an optional, um, sign that can be recorded. And one of the benefits of the symptothermal method, um, in comparison with other methods that, probably only use mucus or only use temperature is that we have this cross-referencing of signs that can help you better determine when ovulation has occurred. 
That's super helpful. That's a point that I know personally, what we really liked when we had started with couple to couple league were those multiple checkpoints because it really otherwise felt a little um, daunting to just think I'm relying on one. I really loved having two checkpoints for myself. And then for us together, as we were charting and looking at my signs, it was like, okay, here's another reference point. Um, And so I think that's a great point to be made and how that works. So with charting, is it paper charts? Is it online? Is it a little bit of both? What does that look like? Uh, You can do uh, paper charts. That's when when we learned the method like 10, 12 years ago when we got married, it was a paper chart. Um, But now there's an app. So you can go like you can do a paper chart or you can use the app. Awesome. But you're able to email your chart over if you're choosing that online option with an app. Is that how it works? Yeah. If you use the app, I think you can just the app has some option where you can just share it with your instructor. That's Um, huge. I think that's such a great feature to have in addition to paper charts, depending on the options, or even if you're just like, you use both where you're just like, I need to quickly put in my symptoms here, but then I'll transfer over because if you, you know, you prefer having the physical copy and being able to spread it out too. Yep. Yeah, exactly. How frequently um, would a couple meet with an an instructor? Um, So there are three different ways of learning the method. Uh, You can do it uh, in person um, that would be a class, a three three sessions uh, each uh, within a month. So it would be t- it would take two months. So you would meet three times. Each class would take about two hours, and this is done this way so that you can give the couple time to practice, you know, charting their signs. And then on the next class, which is a month after, that would give at least probably a cycle, you know, for the woman to chart then you can review that they are charting correctly and recording all the signs and answer any questions. Uh, so that would be three times. And then there's also the, the live online class, which is, it follows the similar uh, pattern. So you meet three times um, a month in between each session. And then the third way to learn the method is the self-paced online. Uh, which it's become pretty popular, uh, especially after COVID, you know, because people were not meeting in person. And we know couples are busy, especially as is as they get closer to their wedding, if they're doing this as a marriage requirement. Uh, so the self-paced they can do at their own pace, right? So they just log in uh, to the website and they follow the they follow the material. Uh, there's some questions they need to answer and they get assigned. Uh, as soon as they register, they get assigned a teaching couple that they can reach to any time they want. Like they probably don't meet with them in person because it's online, uh, but they, they have access to their contact information if they have any questions. That's so awesome. That's great that there are so many different options available that you can really tailor the experience so that you're, you're in a position that you find that you're learning best, which I think is, has been uh, an upside to COVID. If you can find one, <laughs> with COVID. Yeah, yeah. I think that's been really great to see the virtual learning opportunities and being able to tailor that. So there is access to so much more opportunity for NFP instruction so that it's not specific to location, because I know Pre-COVID, that was a challenge that I would get messages around like, you know, I don't have someone near me. What can I do? What method does online teaching? And to see so many offering this now is such a game changer because it really isn't based on location and you get to choose the preference that works best for you. Yeah, because I think uh, before there wouldn't be that many teaching couples. Uh, In our case, we would have to drive for about an hour and a half to teach some couples that wanted to learn the method and there there wasn't this option of doing it online. So I think it's, it's great. And it's, it's making couples at least try it, you know, because it's so much easier now. That is so great. Yeah. And I can't imagine, yeah, for you to drive like an hour and a half, it's like, okay, this couple really wants to be taught. This is great. But then to plan in, okay, we have an hour and a half drive both ways and then working with them. I mean, that's, um, that is a huge barrier to be able to do that. So this is great. Um, what do you recommend to get a spouse involved in the charting process? I mean, it sounds like there's that um, opportunity in the learning phase, but then what would be your tips or suggestions to make sure that both both partners are involved in the charting process together? Sure. Uh, so one way that the, the husband can get involved is 
making sure, you know, reminding uh, the wife, uh, you know, do you have your thermometer? Um, and it's kind of romantic in a way, you know, like as my husband, he every night he's like, hey, here's your thermometer, you know, like make sh making sure it's right by my bed stand. Um, and just re reminding like, hey, are you, how is the chart going? And then around the time that uh, after ovulation has occurred, both husband and wife, because both took the, the, the class, they can interpret the chart together. So that is a great way of taking both of them responsibility about the decisions made around the, you know, the fertility uh, in the cycle. Um, and then decide whether they want to engage in relations or not, depending on, on what the chart says, right? That's awesome. Yeah, I love those tips. And I, I know from personal experience, um, that was something that really helped us in interpreting the chart together. And that was something I really looked for in my husband to be like, okay, am I understanding this right? Like, what do you think? Yeah. And we would just get into a habit of like, let's just look at it together. It's not a matter of like me, me look at it and then you vet it. It was just like, let's just do it together and make sure we're on the same yeah. page. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. And yeah, as you say, it's not something that you're like, uh, what if I make a mistake? You know, like if you do it together and then maybe your husband remembers, oh, I remember when such and such happened, then we could do, we apply this rule, right? Or yeah, what? totally. And if, and you know, if your intention is to avoid and you conceive, you know, you're, you're doing this together so that there isn't that blaming that happens. It's like, well, we're doing the best we can. We're reaching out to our instructor. We're, you know, we're making these decisions together and it doesn't fall on the shoulders of the, of the woman to feel like, oh, I yeah. misinterpreted. I did this incorrectly. Um, and I think it challenges that viewpoint of children are a gift. This is a, this is an opportunity, but there also are serious circumstances and, and you do that you, you dance that dance together in navigating those harder decisions and that discernment process. Exactly. Yeah. So with couple to couple league, if you're single, can you, can single women learn couple to couple league or is it much more tailored towards um, married or engaged couples? Yeah, it's more tailored to engaged or married couples, but I don't think we would turn like if there's a woman that wants to learn it, I don't think we would turn her away. Uh, but because of the content is geared towards, you know, a married or engaged couple, if you're talking about someone maybe and a teenager, right? Like maybe there's some content that is not appropriate for her. Um, so, but I don't think anyone would be turned away. That's really good to know. And I, yeah, I hear you. There are methods that are tailored towards like teen girls and, and, and you know, I'm thinking, um, for the college age woman or someone who's a little bit older, I think that, I think that makes sense, but it does sound like couple to couple league is really best suited, best fit for engaged and married couples based on the, yeah. the dynamic with the teaching couple, which makes total sense. Yeah. And we've had, we've had, um, sometimes like couples where the husband does not want to be part of it and, or for whatever reason they cannot attend. So only the wife attends, you know? Um, we, we've had those locations. Okay. That's good to know too, for those who are listening and trying to figure out the dynamic, especially yeah. if there are challenging, um, work schedules or exactly. dynamics with kids, things like that. Um, what is the failure rate for postpartum, um, and, or nursing? And I know failure rate, I, you know, I, it's a, I, I don't mean to say that children, you know, are terrible it's and it's a failure and they're not a failure, but just like the terminology based on effectiveness and the scientific terminology is, you know, okay, what does it look like to be able to successfully avoid a pregnancy when you are postpartum or nursing and have health reasons that you need to? Uh, I believe I'm not sure about this. I think it's the same effectiveness as, you know, with a, when a woman is having her regular cycles, okay. which is that, that effectiveness is the method effectiveness is 99.6, which stands very close to the pill at 99.7, I think. Uh, but I don't, from what I know, I don't think it changes with postpartum because you're still charting the same signs. Um, so the way the method works is that it's taking a snapshot. It's like taking a snapshot of the current woman's fertility. So it doesn't matter whether you're postpartum or premenopause or, you know, during your regular cycles. It's okay. not um, 
is not relying on history or, you know, like counting days where maybe older methods like the rhythm uh, or the calendar base, they relied on which day of the cycle are you in, right? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And thank you for including the statistics of that too. And I can be sure to include um, the the literature around that as well for those who are curious and want to see it for themselves. Because I know sometimes mm-hmm. when you hear the effectiveness rates um, for natural family planning methods, um, I think it throws people for a loop when they're hearing it for the first time. It's a little yeah. disbelief that like it's possible to be able to conceive or avoid a pregnancy using uh, totally natural yeah, and awesome. something I would like to mention is that sometimes when I go to my OBGYN, you know, with my regular health insurance, they have flyers there, you know, about birth control, and they have all the different methods, and they list the natural methods, but the effectiveness that is listed there is completely wrong. I think they listed at 30% or something like that, because they put together, like, all the different methods, including calendar based or rhythm methods, which are not scientific based, they lump them all together with scientific based methods like the symptothermal. And I think that maybe, I don't know, scaring people away and saying, oh, yeah, of course, like 30%. I, I would not want to use that. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and I, oh gosh, there's so much that I know is being pushed for a natural womanhood, which is a nonprofit organization that they're really pushing to see those statistics change. And I know um, I believe it's the CDC has has recently revised their numbers, but it's it's still not quite to the level of um, what the research has shown yeah. and proving to show as the research continues. And I think that's something that's really important for um, for listeners to understand is that this research hasn't isn't stopping and hasn't stopped. That there's continual learning to better understand effectiveness and mm-hmm. how these methods work to make sure that they are best serving women and the science is rooted in. Um, truth. And it's not yeah. something that is being, um, you know, coerced or changed for, for a particular agenda or anything like that. So I think that's something that um, just continues uh, needing that information being shared and, and continuing to see that um, being addressed as well in the space. So does insurance cover the cost of working with a couple to couple league instructor or taking classes of any kind with CCL? Yeah. So I think um, that would depend on your insurance. Uh, I think the woman interested in taking this class would need to check with her insurance what is covered and what is not. Uh, couple to couple does not provide with a medical receipt. It's just like you took a natural family planning class, right? But um, yeah, we're since we're not a medical provider, uh, we do not give codes for insurance. Um, so yeah, it's, it basically depends on your insurance. Okay. That's really helpful to know. And that's true for a lot of the different interviews I've done for this series that that's a really common response just because every insurance company is a little bit different. Some will provide um, some coverage, full coverage, no coverage. So you do have to go through the work of calling and seeing what that yeah. might look like because it's, it's sometimes categorized under different um care as some of its preventative, some of its fertility or infertility related. So it's very dependent that way. But I'd yeah. like to ask the question just to see, you know, if there's any type of um, changes that you're seeing uh, at an organizational level to say, yes, uh, fortunately, yeah. <laughs> insurance is covering it. That's the hope. That's the dream. Yeah. Yeah. And something to consider is that this is a one-off cost. You know, you pay for the class, which is, I don't know, uh, I think it's 100 and $50 around that around that amount, I think. But once you take the class, like you don't need to continue buying, you know, I don't know, like every month, like test strips or something like that. It's just like one a one-off cost. And then you you are good to go. Um, and you can contact your teaching couple whenever you need to. Um, so it's really not that costly. I, I, un, I understand that maybe some engaged couples, if they are incurring in so many uh, expenses, you know, before the wedding, it can be, you know, an extra cost, but I think it's it's worth the investment. And as you say that, I'm reminded of someone who had shared that uh, they had as a wedding gift, I don't know if they put it on their registry or someone gifted it to them, they gifted their NFP instruction to them, which I thought was such a cool idea 
-hmm. And that may be something, you know, for couples to put it on your registry, if you find that the cost is really high or that this would be an area that you do need some extra monetary support. I will note too, that some methods, depending on what you're buying, like they can be FSA and HSA approved for spending. Mm -hmm. So that depends on um, your insurance package and and what you selected. But I know Amazon will list that depending on certain um, tech that you're using or test strips. And then for thermometers as well, it can be too. So that's just helpful to, to note as well. Um, yeah, and also CCL provides can provide a financial support in case this is really an obstacle why a couple cannot, you know, afford to take a class. That is so great to know too. And and we'll be linking the couple to couple league information in the show notes so that if you're like, wow, this is the method for me, I need to learn more about this, you can find all this information directly there too. Um, what is the training of a couple to couple league instructor? What does that look like to go through the process of training? You mentioned it briefly in the intro, but I'd love to hear a little bit more um, to, so listeners can have a better understanding of what your background looks like and, and how that process works. Sure. So I think one of the requirements is that you are a couple that has been using the method for at least five years um, and that both husband and wife are willing to teach. Um, and then when we decided to to to, to get trained to, to become a teaching couple, we took a seminar. It was a, like a three three day long weekend uh, where we went to San Francisco with a bunch of other couples. And then uh, it was the I think the CEO at that time of couple to couple league with his wife that gave gave us the training. Um, and then we just went over all the material over the weekend and then. After that, we still needed to complete it to complete the training online, uh, which was reading. Um, you know, we had to read some encyclicals, like church documents, like you know, to understand the the church's teaching. We we learned both the science behind the method as well as the theology, you know, behind it. Like, why is this what the church wants for married couples? Um, and in our case, it took us about six months to complete that uh, because it was, you know, whenever we had time to do it. Um, but and and then even as after we became teaching couple, uh, if we have questions, we have like a network within couple to couple where we can reach out. And they there are like some like great, awesome people there that, you know, when you you bump into a case where it's like, oh my goodness, what is this chart? Like, um, it's something that I've never seen before. And it's not something that was probably covered in my training. I can still reach out to someone with more expertise. Um, and then I can give a, like a good answer to, to the couple that is asking for my help. That's great. I think it's really um, great to hear just the network of support that you have as well as an instructor so that like if there is a question or something that you need support in too, there are individuals that you can reach out to as well. Because I think just to see that network of support that's available, I think can be so helpful for someone who's on the fence about an FP or wondering, you know, what if I have a really difficult chart or difficult circumstances I'm navigating? Like there are Uh, people who can support you and this isn't just like if your instructor doesn't know oh too bad like (laughs) oh well (laughs) good luck I guess you're on birth control now so I think that's something that's really huge for yeah and so so far in the years that we have been uh teaching couple like most of the cases we have been able to answer the questions that arise from reviewing charts from our students but there have been a few cases that where we have been you know Need, have the need to ask someone else and there hasn't been a time yet where we're like oh like this is uncharted territory we have no idea what's going on that hasn't happened that's great to hear um, thank you for sharing that too I think that's really helpful for those listening to know okay what is it what would it really look like <laughs> <laughs> how can a woman find a practitioner does couple to couple league offer a database or what would that look like to be able to say okay this is the method I want to use how do I find someone to start you know, creating a relationship with, ask some questions about this, figure out if it's a good fit for me. Uh, so uh, we we have the couple, the couple league has the website. I think it's, you can find it by livethelove.org or just look for a couple to couple league. Um, and there you can find a class. I think the, the first step would be to find a class. And when, as soon as you get registered for a class, you would get assigned a teaching couple. And that's like your go-to 
couple that you can ask questions. Uh, you can email them or call them. Um, and if you take the in-person class, you can meet them in person, uh, which is great because then you can like form a relationship uh, and, you know, build community. That's great. That's really, really helpful. Um, and again, we'll be sure to link to the website and to um, the information available that way in the database. And I know there are other databases where um, instructors can be listed as well that I list on Managing Your Fertility's website too. So I know there's that crossover, but it's helpful if you're really wanting specifically looking for a CCL instructor, how to do that. So that's great that yeah. CCL provides that. Um, okay, we're coming into the last few questions here, but I'd love to hear from you. What are things to consider when picking a method, particularly thinking about picking couple to couple league, what questions should a woman ask herself or, and what, what, what questions should a couple ask themselves if this, if this might be a, a right method for them? Sure. Well, I think it would have to do with, you know, is, is the woman and the couple willing to be diligent about recording signs? Because that's basically all you need. Um, there are some cases where, for example, if you have w women that work uh, night shifts, you know, like nurses, and they, because the method requires you to take the temperature every day, um, and it has to be around the same time. So maybe that's something that you should consider. I know that even women that work night shifts are able to use a uh, symptothermal method. Uh, they just have to record the temperature um, after their, they had a resting time at night. Um, yeah, so I, I think it, it has to do with being diligent about recording your signs. And I, I think that's pretty much it. That's great, thank you. So I guess a, another related question to this as, as we're chatting, how do you know if this is the method that would work well with a lifestyle? And you kind of touched on that, but you said, you know, like, are you diligent in charting your signs? You had also mentioned that third checkpoint that is optional with checking the cervix. You know, are those, are those aspects to consider as well, like comfort level with like wanting to check uh, your cervix or diligence in checking your temperature or, um, you know, other, other aspects that really require that consistency. And that's not to say other methods don't require consistency and habit building that way. I mean, it, you do have to uh, work that in regardless of method, but, um, you know, are there other aspects as far as uh, lifestyle that could be considered in addition to that? You mentioned a little bit with jobs too. And, you know, what, what kind of job are you working? Are those kind of the main aspects to consider? Or would you add anything else? Um, I think that those would be the ones that I would think about. I am trying to think maybe someone who travels a lot and, you know, like maybe a woman that is traveling constantly and, She's changing different time zones and maybe super busy and cannot even, you know, like track mentally, like how was her mucus observations during the day? Uh, I, I think it's still possible to use it, but it would depend on the woman and her diligence to, to keep track of the, all those uh, signs, you know? That's a really great point that I, I really have never thought about with traveling a lot too. That's, that's really great too. And just like, okay, did, do you have the time and the wherewithal to be able to keep track of all this? And I think that's just circling back to the point about paper charts in the app. I think that's why an app is so helpful because even if you prefer paper charts or you like them to be able to have that app option that you can go in and record that information right away that you're not going, oh yeah, I'll write it down later. And then you forget. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just such a, a helpful aspect to this too, when considering, okay, even if my schedule is kind of crazy or I'm working in the habit of charting, you know, it's possible to create those little hacks to be able to be successful in the process yeah. of charting down your symptoms. Yeah. And something I would like to mention is that at first it may seem daunting, like, oh my goodness, like I, it will depend on me, right? It, because I need to track all these signs and maybe I don't even understand how to track them correctly. But I think as you start using it, you'll start gaining confidence. And it's just, uh, to me, it was just fascinating to understand better my body and things that I didn't know about. And just to see how it got reflected on a chart. And I think as the months and the years go by that you keep using it, it gives you this confidence because you have used it. You know, you're, 
you, you now have experience and it's not just something that you learned in the class. It's something that you are living and it, it kind of becomes a lifestyle. You, you are just more in tune with, with your body and listening to, to those signs. Oh, I love that. That's so great. It's a great way to, to wrap up this podcast and just, uh, you know, I hope people listening really feel more comfortable and understanding CCL and, um, find that this is approachable, it's possible and that you can do it. And I think it's been really great to be able to interview instructors with this podcast because it's really seeing, okay, what is it, what does it really look like to work with an instructor and to know like, these are real people that want to help you and want to be able to serve you and work with you. And that there is a network of support so that if something isn't working, like there's possibility to troubleshoot and, and figure this out, that it's possible to understand your body and it doesn't have to seem like this totally daunting experience. So thank you so much, Mariana, for being on the podcast, for your yes in serving couples and in teaching them. This is such a gift that you and your husband offer. And I'm just so looking forward to listeners to be able to enjoy this podcast, listen, and and be able to potentially choose CCL as a method that they would like to use. Thank you so much, Bridget. This was, this was awesome to be part of this. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and help expand the conversation around women's health. If you'd like to learn more about fertility awareness, visit www.managingyourfertility.com for more information, resources, guides, and so much more.